I given you a number yet? 202-224-3121. That would be a number that you would call. And uh, it's the Capitol Hill switchboard. They're supposed to vote today because John Boehner doesn't want any time to go by. No time for any kind of, um, you know, word to get out that what they've done is um, uh, appointed uh, Eric Cantor, if I may say, Eric Cantor's bitch <laughs> to be. No, that's not the, what they call. What's the, what's the real term? Eric Cantor's trophy wife. OK. OK. Yeah. It's, it's a much more it's a much more pleasant term. That's what Andy McCarthy's known as. Yeah, okay. Apparently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His, his trophy yeah. wife. Mm-hmm. So I like to call I'm I'm I'm, I'm from the mean streets. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm right. from the mean streets of Las Colinas, mm-hmm. which is crazy mean. But anyway, um, uh, he's uh, he is the guy that they're going to make the House Majority Leader today. Now, there is another option that Eric Cantor and uh, his bitch and, uh, and uh, John Boehner don't want you to be aware of. I want you to call your, uh, I want you to call the switchboard and I want you to call and ask your House of Representatives member. It doesn't matter. They're not going to vote if they're a Democrat. So it's only the Republicans. I want you to call and flood the Capitol switchboard and you say Raul Labador. Raul Labador. Easy for me to say. Some would say. Me, not so much. (laughs) But Raul Labador is the name of the guy. He's from Idaho. He is the guy to replace Eric Cantor, not the trophy wife. And, uh, I mean, if you thought it was bad with Eric Cantor, th- what they're doing is they are playing payback. And they're saying, oh, really, Tea Party? Oh, you want somebody? Oh, you didn't like Eric. Oh, we'll give you somebody you won't like. This is vengeance. That's what this is. Vengeance. They didn't learn to be humble. They learned to get even. That's why nobody's doing anything about the IRS. That's why the Republicans don't care, because they're going to use the IRS. When they get control, they will use the IRS. So we need somebody in there, not a Republican from California, not a guy who makes Eric Cantor look like uh, me. We need Raul Labador. And I want you to call uh, this number, 202-224-3121. Doesn't Raul Labrador make sense here in the, that, like, the, the Nancy Pelosi... The, mm-hmm. uh, the alter, you know, the Democratic mm-hmm. side, they pull from the most liberal district, one of the most liberal districts yeah. in California yeah. to represent their values. We're mm-hmm. going to take to represent our values. Uh, one of the most moderate Republicans who's essentially, you know, on many things, a and, Democrat and, I'm sorry, what, from California. Yeah. We can't go to a red. We can't even find anyone from a red state. Hang on just a second. I just want to I just want to see what, what's the guy's name? Uh, the trophy wife, Kevin McCarthy, Kevin McCarthy. What color is he? What? Oh, okay. Oh, no. We're 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 debating immigration reform. Mm-hmm. And Kevin McCarthy is all for the reforms. What do you say we get a guy who might be able to withstand well you just you're white and you hate all Hispanics. Yeah, what do you say Raul yeah. would be a good guy? Yeah. Why why what is this? What is it? What is it, GOP? Are you so racist you won't put Raul in? Yeah. Is that what it is? Are you afraid of the Hispanic? Because believe me, that's what I'll make sure everybody knows. Well, it uh, is Bill, amazing. Bill Maher pointed that out, by the way. The only reason the Republicans voted Eric Cantor out is because he was Jewish. So now they want now everyone in the party is white, according right. to him. Right. Uh, so is, let's let's I didn't let's even stay know away he was from Jewish. I didn't did either. anybody know that? Yeah, I did. Did you? I did. Yeah. Well, my I Jewish no my Jewish masters called me. Oh, and they, oh okay. they were very upset. <laughs> very upset. <laughs> okay. Actually, if I had Jewish masters, they would be from Israel, and they would probably be very much for <laughs> Eric Cantor being gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody I know in everybody I know in Israel is more conservative than I am. They're like. I say nuke the bastards. <laughs> You're like, okay, all right, I don't think that's necessarily a good idea. Um, call the Capitol switchboard and ask ask um, your um, uh, your uh, House of Representatives um, member who he's going to vote for, and uh, make sure it's Raul Labrador. And if it's not, ask him why he's so racist. And, and also ask them uh, why Glenn is leaving out the middle R for savings. Uh, it's Labrador. L- uh, Labrador. Is, yes, like the dog. It's not Labrador. Labrador. I'm I'm so concerned about saying Raul Labrador. <laughs> I, I, I try to get this, just a transition between the first name and the second name. I, right. 
Mm -hmm. Don't know what is wrong with me or how I ever got this job, but I you have, have it. Asked and you're the gonna, same question. I know. Well, you don't repeatedly. need to dwell on it. We don't need. Did I mention it's two zero two 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 four thirty one twenty one? We tried to investigate how you got this job, but all the emails were deleted and then recycled. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> oh, so darn it! Dang it! it oh man! Shoot! Oh, I hate when that happens. Oh, let's see. Got a um, got an email in from a very good friend, Mike Broomhead. Mike has, um, for as talented as he is, has the dumbest last name for anybody ever in radio. Broomhead. Who keeps that? Well, I guess he does. Anyway, Mike writes, he said, Glenn heard your comment about Iraq, and I'm really torn. I received a letter from my brother after returning um, from his funeral. Remember... Mike got into radio. Um, he's a, a talk show host on our affiliate in um, in Phoenix, and a very good friend, and one of the one of the more honest people on the radio. I mean, I really, really admire this man. And uh, he got into it because of his brother, and his brother died in Iraq. He said, "I was happy. Uh, he was so happy to give the Iraqi people a chance at freedom. I can't shake the feeling that if we just sit back and watch Iraq spin into chaos, that my brother died for nothing." I'm also concerned that radical Islam will continue to grow and become more bold and powerful. But I don't want in, I don't want any family to endure what we have if no good can come from it, from our involvement there. I love you like a brother. Wish I had clarity on this. Maybe I'm too emotional on this one. I, I want to answer Mike um, um, personally on this one because, and I want you to hear it because he 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 says it all. He gives his answer in the email. Heard your comments about Iraq, and I'm torn. I think we all are. We all are torn on this. I received a letter from my brother after returning from his funeral. He was happy to give the Iraqi people a chance at freedom. There's your answer. He gave them a chance at freedom. He did not give them freedom. You cannot give it to them. I said when we went in, look for the man who will be on the stamp. You remember me saying that? We were in Philadelphia at the time. When we first went in, look for the man who will be on the stamp. That guy never showed up. Nobody ever took the reins and said, I will be the hero. Nobody ever rallied the troops. The only ones that did it were the Islamic radicals. When the Islamic radicals here just in the last week started to come and they started to take the tanks and take control, what happened? Where were the Iraqi people? The Iraqi army that we have just spent $2 trillion on, those people, the commanders, got up and walked away. They just walked away. Why do they have our Humvees and everything else? Because the Iraqi people walked away. So your brother did die for something. He died to give people a chance at freedom. You don't have to carry that burden anymore. They do. They will be held eternally responsible for the freedom that they lost. Your brother will be forever blessed by the freedom he tried to allow them to have. The freedom that he enabled them to be able to have within their grasp. They refuse to pull it off the shelf and stand, live, and die for it. Your brother died to be able to give someone else a chance at that freedom. They will be responsible for the freedom that they lose. Here's my point. We will be responsible for the freedom we lose. Freedom was, is within our grasp right now. And it may be the last time for 70 years this, this people on this land have an opportunity to have freedom. We so undervalue our freedom to say what we believe to start our own business, to be our own man, to chart our own course, to dream. We've always been. We've always been a people that have broken the mold. We've always been a people that went the other way, that said, you know what, let's go west. Well, we're out of land, but we're not out of ideas. And that's what is, that's the biggest crime in this country right now is we are being told that the best days are behind us. Why? Because there's no pure land anymore. But there are pure ideas. There are better ideas. I mean, look at it. Look at, just look at the renewal of our inner cities. 
Look at some of the places that are around the country right now that are that are taking these old factories and they're going in and they're making these great spaces out of them. <clears throat> That's what needs to happen with us. Yes, our old factories are 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 desolate. Our old ideas, the way we built it, the way we thought this country was going to end up looking, they're gone. But look at what the opportunity is in front of us. We pick up with worn out and broken tools and we begin again. And real Americans do not mutter what they've been through. They don't mutter underneath their breath. They pick them up with cheer. They pick them up with joy. And together we wend our way. Together we make a new path and we chart a new course just over the horizon. But we have a choice. Just like the Iraqi people, they had a choice. Freedom is never free. The big, bad U.S. military came in and said, we will straighten things out. We will even the odds for you. We will level the playing field. But what, what progressives, and now, and I mean that on both sides of the aisle, progressives on both sides of the aisle, and what too many Americans are believing is that when you even the odds, it always stays even. No. No. You have a bully. We'll knock him down to size. But you need to stand up for yourself and get strong. You need to do it. Otherwise, you're always going to need mommy there. No, mommy's not always there. And in this case, daddy's not always there. Daddy's not coming back. Daddy did his job. Your adolescence has come and gone. It's time for you to be a man. They have to stand up. We helped them. We did our part. It's time for them to do it now. Because there is too many problems here. Daddy needs to come home. Too many things are wrong here. We need to strengthen ourselves and understand we're about to lose freedom. And that's the only thing that we'll be held accountable for in the end. We did our best. Let's not lose freedom here.